Welcome to Barron Public Library's Friday Read Aloud. This week, I'm sharing a book with you about Black history. It has introduced me to a piece of Black history that I, frankly, was completely unaware of before now, and has given me much more to think about when it comes to equity and diversity. I share it with you in hopes that it will open your mind. Overground Railroad, written by Lisa Klein Ransom, illustrated by James Ransom. Some walked, some drove, but we took the train north. Me and Mama and Daddy got to the station crack of dawn early before anyone could see us leave. Daddy holding tight to me with one hand, three tickets to New York in the other. The porter helped us on board, then handed us our bags and our shoebox filled with food and tied with string onto the first train out of North Carolina, just as the conductor yelled, All aboard! New York bound Silver Meteor! Daddy led me to the last seats in the colored car and let me sit next to the window to watch as the train whistled and chugged leaving puffs of smoke behind. The conductor shouts, Next stop, Rocky Mount! We left in secret before Daddy's boss knew. Before our lease was up, we said our goodbyes to Uncle Buck and Granddaddy and Grandma, her wet cheek pressed against mine. Ruth Ellen, you mind your mama and daddy, she said. No more picking, daddy said mad. No more work in someone else's land, mama said proud. We're going to make our way up north, they both said. Out the window, I watched Blue Ridge Mountains and fields with folks already hunched and picking row after row of cotton tobacco and peanuts every day, except the Lord's Day, just like my granddaddy, but not anymore for my daddy. At the next stop, more people and boxes and satchels squeezed into the colored car. So many they stood on tired feet or sat on hard floors, right where they were. Daddy pulled out cards to pass the time. I won at rummy, Daddy at war. In my bag is the book teacher pressed in my hands on my last day of school before we left. Next stop, Norfolk, Virginia. In our straight back seats, when we finish with cards, Mama fusses in her purse. Daddy stares ahead. I take out the book teacher gave me. The cover's worn, pages too. Read to me, Ruthie, Mama says. And I do. First, the title. Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. Then I turn to the first page. I was born in Tuckahoe, near Hillsboro, about 12 miles from Easton in Talbot County, Maryland. Mama listens till her eyes blink long, longer, and then close, but I keep on. Next stop, Alexandria, Virginia. Out the window, in between pages, I watch as crooked shacks sprout on the edge of fields. Folks wave from their doorways, and I wave back. Mama turns in her sleep, restless and dreaming. All around me, everybody leaving for the north, talks in Bible words. Exodus, Egypt, Canaan, hoping that Chicago, Detroit, and New York City are the promised land. 
Next up, Washington, D.C. The porters come and move signs, waking Daddy, telling everyone in the colored section to sit where they want. We don't have to stay in front behind the engine breathing in smoke because we're past the line that divides black from white, south from north. Wrong from right. I wait to move, but we wait more. Finally, Daddy takes my hand and Mama stands and we walk down the aisle, out the colored car and through the curtain. Next up, Baltimore, Maryland. On the other side of the curtain is the dining car with tablecloths and clinking glasses and white faces and good food smells that make my stomach growl and make me wish we hadn't eaten grandma's fried chicken and hard boiled eggs and lemon pound cake so soon. Next stop, Newark, Delaware. We walk past row after row of white folks who stare or turn away with eyes that say, keep moving when they see us. Some put hands in empty seats, not here. And we keep walking until we find smiles from new neighbors. Out the window, People turn and point, and I see water, a whole river running along beside us. It's the Delaware River, a mother says to her boy. The book teacher gave me has pages filled with the story of a boy leaving behind what he knew and heading to what he don't, just like me. Only he didn't have a ticket bought by his daddy and food packed by his grandma. So he was cold and hungry, but he kept on running at night with only the North Star to guide him along the Chesapeake and the Delaware River in secret, getting help along the way till he made his way walking to freedom north. Next stop, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I watch the tracks in front of me and behind me, just as far as the eye can see. Mama and Daddy say jobs, education, freedom are waiting in New York for us. And like the boy in the book, we all running from and running to at the same time. Last up, New York City, Penn Station. We step off the train and I stretch my neck to see bright lights, tall buildings shimmering against a sky bright as a hundred North stars. Daddy grabs our bags I squeeze Mama's hand. The other holds tight to my book. And now, I would like to share the author's note. After writing about the lives of Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, I was very familiar with the intricate and elaborate network called the Underground Railroad. But I'd certainly never heard of the Overground Railroad a term I discovered after reading Isabel Wilkerson's The Warmth of Other Suns. The Overground Railroad refers to a railway system that carried millions of blacks who left the South during the Great Migration. At times, this system was as much a covert operation as the Underground Railroad, as the owners of farms who operated tenant farms, also called sharecropping 
used threats of violence and other tactics to prevent workers from leaving. The sharecropping system kept many of its black tenants perpetually in debt to their landlords and made it illegal to leave without permission or before repaying the debts incurred for planting and other supplies. As a result, many blacks departed on trains north under the cover of night or secretly boarding trains miles from home in neighboring towns for the chance at better employment, education, and a life in the North, free from oppression. Overground Railroad is inspired by just one of the many stories of people who were running from and running to at the same time. Lisa Klein Ransom. Well, this is new learning for me, and it's really piqued my interest. I think I'm going to look up Wilkerson's The Warmth of Other Suns and maybe get on the History Channel and see if there's any information about the Great Migration. What has this book left you curious about? Make a trip to the library and see what you can find out. Until next time, this is Miss Patricia. Keep wondering and keep reading.